has given us a few things to think about. Um, yeah, um, I'm wondering what, um, how this will change the kind of work that we do with manuscripts that we do as manuscript forms. So are, 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 are we is what you're proposing, what you're involved in, a way of modeling what scholars already do? Uh, you seem to suggest that that's that is the basis. Um, but will it also change the way we work with manuscripts? Um, and what in what ways could we envisage that uh, instead of just enabling us to do what we already do in a slightly different way, or will we actually be able to do things that it hasn't been possible to do before? I mean, this has been the big, the great debate is are we really I hate
over different databases using tripods, yeah. something like this. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, the problem is not to stop doing what we are actually doing, but to do something more. Yeah, I get the point? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, the point being, and I haven't talked about that, that, that this touring machine has limitations. Um, the last priority was representation. Um, and once you want to go a bit further than mere denotation, um, the machine doesn't work anymore. If you bring in connotations, ROD and these kind of things, it crumbles. So it has clear limitations in terms of signification modes. And we may be able someday to, to, to cross these, but for the time being they are quite evident. And the um, the computer science people are not really aware of them. Um, and that's why we need to do digital humanities work. Because uh, <coughs> I once had a talk to a very senior computer scientist uh, a few years ago and told him about what about a bit more complex modes of signification. And he said, yeah, we know that it's the Pandora box of semiotics. We're not going to open that. Um, we can open it. So, there are the limitations. <coughs> So it's 
very important to be able to ask intelligent questions or to reliable uh, conclusions on this. That we have to build authority lists uh, like IA, or even since IA is a, is a general thing, we have to build them bottom up so that our scholars can add information in kind of uh, accumulating and quality assurance. Assured uh, authority lists for persons, places, events, concepts, and so on and so forth. Because it's also very, uh, as you see from your graph, which is not there now, you see that DVP yeah, is very central. And that is because that's the only main source today. And that has to be changed actually. So I think that scholars will never be <laughs> out of work to make this work. Now that, that calls for lots of comments. Um, I briefly tried to hint at the issue that you're talking about when I said that it is very difficult today to um, reconstitute a part of the web in the past. Um, that's a big problem because actually there is a desire problem in the web itself. It has no time factor. Um, this is, by the way, what, what Ted Nelson has always uh, criticized. Um, so on the one hand, web resources evolve over time and there is currently no convincing model to, to actually keep track of that. Um, and the content of ontologies as well evolves. Um, we had this nice example yesterday of Breslau and Rochlev. Um, so it may even evolve in very conflictual ways. Um, and there again we need to find means to, to deal with that. And not be all too mechanistic. Take, for instance, um, the city of today, it's St. Petersburg, which was Leningrad before. Um, so you could have a rule that after, I think it was 95, everything that relates to the city relates to St. Petersburg, and before it related to Leningrad. But then you get the Leningrad cowboys, and you would not call these St. Petersburg cowboys. So the, these are quite tricky kind of things to get into them. Um, but I would rather characterize them as, as challenging. They are a very good thing for me as an information scientist. They create work for ages. But these are real problems. Analysis and narrative analysis isn't that essential 
at least from a theoretical point of view, uh, to be able to construct anything that goes in the direction of reasoning that would be a heuristics uh, for the humanities. So what's, what, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, <coughs> the, the reasoning I was referring to is very simple deterministic reasoning. Um, and that again has, has clear limits. Um, I may have made the mistake there to simply use the term coined by the computer scientists. They call that reasoning. Um, and they call software that, that implements this reasonless. Um, and one should probably be a bit more critical in that respect. Um, as to the more complex digital humanities operations, like for instance the, the, the narrative analysis here Christoph Meister is doing these kind of things. Um, that is probably far more complex than, than what we'll be able to do in PM2E. Um, we are limited to a specific class of objects and the kind of statements you could make on them. We are not as ambitious as to, to go into, for instance, um, narrative analysis, which is something that can be done and which is far more complex than just combining our statements. I'm not trying to, to, to say that we remodel the, the whole field of digital humanities in that project. We can't do it. Just a moment on that. I not that, but uh, on the point here. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we should do. I will never use uh, RDF triple store, which is a huge amount of triples, in order to maintain my data. Because it's very difficult. To, to, to clean it and it's difficult to maintain it. But what I just want to say is that in, there are two principles in RDF. One is that RDF see, can be seen, an RDF triple store can be seen as a relational database with just one table, mm -hmm. and a relational database can be exported into the RDF triple store. Yeah. But it's hard to do it with backwards. So one should be very cautious in which kind of formalism and mechanism one wants to uh, maintain one's data. For example, if I put on my PEI XML hat, I would prefer to store my document as an XML PEI document and then export it into our data mm -hmm. because it's easy to maintain that way because it's more close to the original. And that's what I intend to do with the Norwegian collection of chocolates. Uh, but I, I do agree that we should expose our data as it's not yet that that's clear. But we should, we should not uh, be so blurred that we think that, that it's the same as keeping our data. Well, this is part of a big discussion. Yeah. Um, and it's currently one of the most active discussions in, in the W3C. There are the XML tree-like thinking people and there are the graph people. And uh, that, that will probably keep us busy for some years now. Um, I agree with you that there are existing working tools to turn relational database content into RDF. That's existing technology. Um, whether we need to do the inverse, I'm not really sure. It's, it's, it is very hard anyway. Only a closing I mean, in remark on what we were saying five minutes ago. Uh, I don't think that uh, to make the Turing like uh, world you were presenting us we need only to uh, disseminate data. <coughs> I think that something more should be done because if you only uh, expose data, only part of the, of the machine will work. You have to disseminate and to, let me say, annotate or to enrich in some way data. Because otherwise, the whole thing 
probably won't work. Yeah. So this is my opinion. I don't know if you agree or not. I do agree, and this is why um, we have this automated contextualization activity in, in the DMG. Um, I would even say we need to do even more, not only just contextualize, enrich. Um, we also need to create incentives for people to actually participate um, in such environments. And the incentives in the traditional scholarly world are simply simply the reputation to be gained from publication. Um, and we have to create a counterpart for that in, in digital humanities environments. And that's something we know very little about because it is currently still quite difficult to express, for instance, provenance um, in an RDF environment. Um, so there's work underway in that respect, and I do agree that the picture I've been exposing was the simplistic one. But I only have 30 minutes, I used 45, and I could have taken much more. In that case, I'm just not.